Gun Lance, arguably the most unique melee weapon in Monster Hunter World. While all gun lances have a lance, not all the guns are the same. With three different kinds of shelling and no shelling builds, with each having an individual playstyle, gun lance has the largest assortment of playstyles for a single melee weapon class. But how do you maximize the damage on your gun lance? Well, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And we're the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math, Math Guys. Guys. And this is Monster Hunter Meta Gun Lance Builds. In this video, we'll be covering the highest DPS sets for each of the Gunlance styles. We already have videos discussing the three different shelling types and the respective playstyles. Understanding how these differ is important to understanding build choices, so link to that in the top right if you still have questions. Now because Gunlance has a lot of qualifying information, this particular meta video's preface is going to be a lot longer than normal. But if you don't care about any of that information and you just want to build, skip to 3 minutes 50. The only playstyle we will not be covering is Long Gun Lance because, well, there isn't really a meta set for Long Gun Lance. In order to maximize the damage on your Long Gun Lance, you need Focus 3, Artillery 3, and Capacity Boost. Razor Sharp and Handicraft also help you maintain sharpness, but you don't suffer damage loss on your shelling until you hit Yellow Sharpness. And it takes a very long time to hit Yellow Sharpness on Long Gun Lance. The reality is, you can fit all of these on a build for Long Gun Lance and still have space for whatever other skills you want. Which of these skills you include is matchup dependent and just personal preference. There isn't much point to stacking EFR in a long build, because at that point, metal wide builds deal more damage on every combo anyway. The only exception being charge shells, but as we discussed in our Gun Lance math video, wide still out DPSs that with its shelling combo. As always, I want to start off with a quick disclaimer. All the builds, analysis, breakdowns, and everything we do on the channel are not meant to tell you how to play. Unless you are a speedrunner or otherwise care about Max Deeps, these are not the only way to play and we are not suggesting that. The purpose of what we do is to educate and inform. It's to give you the factual information on the relative strengths of different builds and playstyles so that you can make informed build decisions. Simply put, there is a lack of accurate information out there on what builds produce the highest DPS in hunts. This video series is meant to provide you with that information, not to state that this is how you should play. Play how you like and enjoy yourself, it is a video game after all. Also, a quick note about guard levels, they are the same breakpoints as Lance. So, zero guard for anything we don't list, level 1 for Diablos, Val, and Ancient Leshen, and level 3 for Joe, Comfia, Teo runs, and Behemoth. Level 5 is for ATKT exclusively, but honestly, Gun Lance is one of the worst weapons you can bring for ATKT. Guard up is only really required for Behemoth, ATKT, Ancient Leshen, and Arc Tempered Xeno. Every other unblockable move in the game is fairly easy to dodge. However, we won't be listing individual builds for each of these breakpoints. For one thing, this will quadruple the size of this already very long list of builds. And secondly, hopping is generally better than guarding on Gun Lance anyway. Unlike Lance, Gun Lance cannot animation cancel into blocks. In other words, whenever you attack, there is a lot more animation lockout before you can guard compared to hopping. This is why every competitive Gun Lance speedrun focuses more on hopping than blocking to mitigate damage. Additionally, the Evade Distance skill has a stronger effect on Gun Lance hops compared to other weapons, so between the less animation lockout and this fact, Evade Window or Evade Distance is generally a better defensive skill investment. That being said, we will make recommendations of what skills you should trade for guard if you want to, in other words, the skills that give you the lowest damage returns. Alright, onto the builds. Let's start with the highest DPS option first, Swing Lance aka Smack Lance. There are two Swing Lances that compete for the top spot in terms of DPS, the Tarith Buster Poison and the Insatiable Gun Lance. Let's start with the Poison Gun Lance first, the one you can see in the background footage. We'll start with the peak performance set first. This is the one that will be the best against most matchups in the game. Health Augment is mandatory, as this is a peak performance set. Swing Lance is the only way to effectively use Master's Touch. This is because Shelling can't crit and ignores Master's Touch, but Swing Lance doesn't use Shelling. This nearly infinite white sharpness keeps your juicy EFR of 580.63 constantly high, making this the highest damage build out of all the gun lances. This is more than enough damage to keep a lot of monsters constantly flinch or trip locked if used well. We keep it non-elemental because it results in higher damage returns on swing lance compared to unlocking the poison status. Sub out an attack deco for guard 1 or for guard 3 sub out all the peak decos and change the augment to attack. Or if you don't have a second one to augment, sub out one attack deco and two peak decos and keep the health augment. 
With a few adjustments, this also makes a good aerial gun lance build, but we won't be covering one of these as it's too niche a build to fit into one of our videos. The alternative set for the Poison Gun Lance is the Agitator version. This has 0.36 lower EFR than the Peak set, even when both have Agitator active. But because this isn't Peak Reliant, it's better against matchups like Teostra that you can't effectively use Peak against. The damage augment is ideal for DPS and best if you can flinch lock the monster well with your Swing Lance. But if not, running Health Augment with Rock Steady Mantle will be your best bet for this build. Feel free to sub out Agitator Echoes if you'd like more guard. The other competitive Swing Lance is the Joe Gun Lance, the Insatiable Gun Lance. There are two versions of this build as well, let's start with the one handicraft version. At 571.44 EFR, this is only 9.19 EFR lower than the peak poison build. And it gets 27 effective dragon element, which is very nice. This build will outdamage the poison on almost any monster even slightly weak to dragon. But between the 10 units of sharpness and a lot of conditional affinity, it's very possible to hit blue sharpness if your play isn't super clean. And if you do hit blue sharpness, this build is going to be significantly worse than any of the other swing lance builds in the video. Another problem is that this gun lance can't really afford to run guard higher than level 1. All skills are needed except for one attack deco to maintain that tight amount of white sharpness. Switching the second augment to an affinity augment will give you a little bit more leeway on the sharpness in exchange for losing a little EFR. The alternative set runs three handicraft. This drops the EFR down to 556.74, a 14.7 EFR loss. This is less optimal for damage, but gives you three times the white sharpness, which is a lot more forgiving. You can switch an augment to health if you like. With three times the sharpness, you're less likely to hit blue, even with the 5% affinity hit. However, this build has the same issue as the last one, which is that it's very hard to fit guard into. When in guard 1, you have to drop an expert deco. With a health augment as well, this drops your affinity to 88 with agitator active and 85 without. That's an average of 200 to 250 hits until blue, which isn't very much if you factor in whiffing on weak points. Guard 3 means dropping two expert decos and an attack deco, which tanks your EFR on affinity. If you run a health augment, that's 75 to 78 affinity. That's only 120 to 136 on average until you hit blue sharpness, which is more than enough for swing lance to kill a thing, assuming you almost always hit weak points. TLDR, if you want to run guard on the set, the KT Poison Gun Lance is much better at doing so. Next is Normal. This one is a lot more simple as there's only one queen for Normal Gun Lance, the pink Rathian Gun Lance, the Royal Burst. At 504.5 EFR, this is the highest DPS set you can get for the Royal Burst. Technically, you can fit more EFR into the set, but this set is higher DPS than those for one reason, white sharpness uptime. Fun fact time, Protective Polish's duration is affected by Item Prolonger. At Item Prolonger 3, you have 1 minute 30 of protected sharpness instead of just 1 minute. The ratio of raw damage to shelling damage on the full burst combo is very heavily focused on the raw side, so this white sharpness is very important. And anyone who's ever played full burst normal gun lance can tell you a single full burst combo shreds your sharpness. So maximizing this polish uptime is very important. Other than that, you have your standard shelling skills in there, artillery 3 and capacity boost. Everything else is standard EFR skill stacking to maximize our raw damage. Very nice, Sue. For guard levels, there isn't much that you can sub out. Realistically, you don't block much, if ever, when full burst spamming. It's kind of a feast or famine playstyle. Plus, for full burst playstyle, hopping is better than blocking. Remember that animation lockout thing I talked about earlier? Well, the attacks in full burst have the longest animation lockouts before you can block in Gun Lance's moveset. Hopping can cancel these recovery animations, but blocking cannot, making it fairly unreliable for actually blocking attacks unless you get lucky or play very safe. Everything is needed in this set, but if you drop item prolonger, you'll be able to fit in the guard. Just remember that you'll need to sharpen a lot more. So there's another competitive normal option, the Sleep Gun Lance. In fact, it has two more EFR than the Royal Burst. The Royal Burst remains the queen of normal gun lance because it has poison, which can more than make up the difference. That means the only way that Sleep Gun Lance can win is against poison immune monsters. Guess how many of those there are? The answer is one. It's Zora. Lol. Alright, finally we have the Wide Gun Lance. There are quite a few options for this one. Let's start with the best one overall, the Kiara Bomber Gun Lance. This first build is the peak build for the Kiara Bomber, mandatory health augment for peak build as always. 
At 460.37 EFR, this build actually has lower EFR than the other options we'll be covering in just a bit. But between the 14.32 effective status and crit status, this will easily get you over 6 blast procs per hunt. Gunlance is one of the only weapons in the game that can make up a decent EFR difference with blast procs due to shelling damage making up a decent percentage of your total DPS. And shells, of course, are not affected by EFR. We run Razor Sharp over Protective Polish on Wide Gunlance for a few reasons. One, Protective Polish is more optimal when maintaining a small amount of white sharpness and not at extending a large amount of natural blue. In order for Polish to give us the same blue uptime increase over its 1 minute duration, we would need to hit the monster 100 times in those 60 seconds. 2. Razor Sharp has a unique effect with shelling. In addition to having your sharpness use, shelling has a 10% natural chance to simply not consume sharpness. Very similar to all dual blades having Razor Sharp, it's never explained, but it is a thing. Now, this potential for free sharpness on shelling is not very significant on normal full burst, its shells per second is very low. However, wide shelling spams a shell almost every second, sometimes several a second depending on what combo you're using, so this can rack up free sharpness very fast. TLDR, Razor Sharp is the most optimal sharpness loss mitigation for wide gun lance. Now for guard levels, just about up to 3 attack decos. The alternate build for the Kiar Bomber is an agitator build. At 465.36 EFR, this actually hits higher EFR than the previous build. Only problem is, Agitator is specifically better the faster the hunt is. Most monsters you can enrage right at the start of the fight, and the closer your kill time is to them unenraging, the more uptime you get. But for the matchups that die really fast, Swing Lance or Normal is almost always a better choice for pure kill time. However, if you don't like using those two styles, this build is your go-to for those quick matchups. Or if you just don't like using Peak. For guard level, sub out one attack deco and up to two agitator decos. The next most competitive option is the KD Water Gun Lance. Kiar Bomber beats this in most every matchup, but we'll still cover them in case you don't have the Kiar Bomber. This is a peak set, standard stuff, health augment and all. At 479.18 EFR, it only beats the Kiar Bomber by 18.81 EFR. That's unfortunately not enough damage to make up the difference from the blast. Additionally, this gun lance only has 60 units of blue naturally, effectively 120 with Razor Sharp. That's a whole 80 less than the bomber, making blue rather hard to maintain compared to the bomber. But it is an option. Drop the peak decos for guard level if you need it. The KD Water also has an agitator set. At 486.34 EFR, this one has a decent EFR lead over the bomber. But it's still not enough to make up the blast damage difference. 25.97 EFR is a strong EFR lead on any other weapon. However, Gun Lance has shelling damage mixed in, so it doesn't make enough of a difference. Same as before, sub out Agitator for guard level. And the final KT Water build is a weird one. This one completely breaks normal conventions for wide gun lance and on paper could be better on shorter runs. So this one runs white sharpness and protective polish instead of razor sharp, so why do we do this? Well, it raises the EFR to a hefty 529.18 EFR, that's a whole 42.84 EFR higher than the agitator build. And it only drops to 481.08 EFR in blue, which is only 5.26 EFR lower. So if you make good use of the 1 minute of free white sharpness to deal damage, it's much better than the other builds. In theory. Calculating the sharpness uptime breakpoints on when this will be better gets really complicated. Realistically, the best way to determine whether it's better or not is for a skilled gun launch speedrunner to test both. And at the moment, this build is untested, I created it a few days ago. And as for getting it tested to a good level of scrutiny, other than the fact that I am in no way a gun launch speedrunner, there's another problem. This build still loses to the bomber against any matchup that is not very resistant to blast. And in theory, this build is best against weak monsters that the hunt is very fast and are also resistant to blast. But for those matchups, Swing Lance is better anyway. So yeah, buyer beware, untested build that on paper may be better, use at your own discretion. There is now one final gun lance to cover, the Kiar Water Gun Lance. With 55.22 effective water, this build hits a lower level of EFR but hits very hard against water weak monsters. 
This is unfortunately the only elemental wide gun lance worth using, so it fills a very specific niche of fighting monsters like Teostra and Uragan. Best option for fighting them though, by far. Also, it has an agitator version for monsters like Teostra that you can't use peak well on. And same as the other builds, sub out the agitator or the peak decos if you want to run guard levels. Although realistically, subbing in either evade window or evade distance into those slots instead will probably work out better. Alright, that does it guys, that is every single one of the meta builds for Gunlands. As always, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you know what to do. If you'd like to find somebody to hunt with, you can check out our Discord server in the Mathalos Nest. You can follow us on Twitter where we post updates to the channel and other things that interest us. You can also check me out on Twitch where I stream Monster Hunter and other games almost every day. Shout out to Honey for providing the tools we use to make sets. And an especially big thank you to Zahn for providing the background footage we used in this video. I don't really like playing Gunland, so thanks. He is not only a phenomenal speedrunner that holds the current world records on the TA wiki for Rathalos Rematch, Pretty in Pink, Special Arena Uragon, Rathalos and Legiana, as well as Dual Blade world records for Rathalos and Azure Rathalos, but he's also a member of one of my old squad's Poogie Patrol, the one that I got that KT world record with all the way back in the day. And he is a member of the team that got the current world record for ATKT Pursuit Level 1 at 8 minutes and 17 seconds. Damn. And he's one of the set optimizers on our Discord server. That's right, ladies, he's the full package. Anyway, link to his channel in the description. He and the team at Poogie Patrol are planning on going for a sub 880 KTP1 next time she comes around, so be sure to subscribe to him if you'd like to see that as soon as it comes out. And a thank you to God High, another one of our set optimizers who did provide the normal gun lance footage in the video. Also, if you enjoy our content and would like to help support us in bringing this kind of stuff out to you, be sure to check out our Patreon. And a huge thank you to our patrons, MC Persona, Ray, Exponage, Yoshi Cho, David Sternberg, XCLK07, Heika, Milky Powder, David, John Cowan, Warren Kios, Hen Satsuken, Wed Manticore, Lithobully, Bram Orsel, Anti Spartan, Lightweight, Jordan Petit, Skylar Yang, Czech Lemon, Lupin, Mongus, Triple Agent, Alan Odom, Zim, Billy Barthel, Magister Obscura, Jamie, and everyone else who's been supporting us on Patreon. Seeing the support you guys have been giving us has been life changing. Really, we can't thank you enough. We already know which videos we'll be covering for our last three in the meta set, but. I'm excited to announce that we'll be including a new video series about weapon guides. Guides on how to use weapons, not just what builds to use. This will help you achieve max DPS while you're playing. So if you're interested in directing us on which weapons to cover, be sure to check out the Patreon. If you made it this far, let me know your favorite color. We'll see you in the next one guys. Happy hunting hunters. Bye. Bye.